teaching art at my favorite place in the world, the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. I'm probably either playing outside or making something. My favorite things to make are functional art objects. I like things with a purpose, so I'm always making jewelry or sewing or making things out of clay. But first, let's talk about the things you would need to set up your ceramic studio. You can see that I have a piece of fabric on my table because if you take clay and you put it on a smooth work surface, it sticks and you're going to have to scrape it up with your fingernails like I'm doing now. It's messy, it's frustrating, but if you work with your clay on fabric, you can see that doesn't stick. Usually I use old dish towels, but I didn't want you to have to see all my spaghetti sauce stains on my old dish towel. So I got this cleaner piece of fabric out for today. So just find a piece of fabric. Something else you're going to need is a little dish with just a little bit of water. It's helpful to have a sponge. And you might need a toothpick or another little twig. You can even use your fingernail for some things just for scratching and attaching. I couldn't find a regular toothpick, so I have this kind of funny one. If you want to go all out and buy more clay tools, they really aren't that expensive. I have a set of tools here, and there's all kinds of things, and um, I don't even think I spent $15 on this set of tools. There are things for scratching and shaping clay. There's a wire for cutting clay. There are different kinds of ribs for shaping clay. But really, a lot of these objects, you can find something similar at home. Toothpicks, popsicle sticks, forks. So just use your imagination and look around your house and I'm sure you'll find something. So, if you don't want to wait and you want to make your clay right now, I'm going to tell you about a material called salt dough. Here's it, here it is. It looks kind of like bread dough because it is kind of like bread dough. All it is, is um, this one has a quarter cup of salt and a cup of flour. So four times the amount of flour as salt and about as much water as salt. And you just mix it up like you're making dough, like you're making bread, and you can actually dry this out just on the counter or in your oven and then paint it with acrylic paint later. Um, this salt dough, I usually will bake at about 200, just slow and low for a long time. And you end up with something like this. Now I'll have to paint this with acrylic if I want to be able to use it. And it's a little bit more fragile than clay. And it can't quite make as many things as clay, but if you're itching to make a small sculpture, a little functional art object today, salt dough might be your answer. So four times as much flour as salt and about as much water as salt. And you've got easy salt dough from home. If you want to use regular clay, there's a couple of different kinds. And my suggestion, there's actually lots of different kinds, is to find a place where you might want to fire your clay, send them a message and say, what kind of clay do you think I should buy? And then maybe you can buy online from them or you can look on the internet and buy something. At the museum, we often use low fire clay so it doesn't have to cook quite as hot as high fire clay. And it makes these kind of simple shiny objects it fires white, starts out gray and fires white, or we also have some red that fires red. And after it's bisque fired, that means before it's glazed in the first fire, it's kind of this plain white, and this one you can see has been decorated with watercolors. You can also use different underglazes that can go on before the first firing or in the second firing, and you get these bright colors and it gets shiny. And now these objects, could hold water. I could put a little dish of water maybe for a bird or a hamster in there. And you can use clay, regular clay, and not fire it too. And then you get what's called greenware. These two little guys sitting out here as well as this kitty are greenware. 
We are just made from clay, clay from the earth that I bought from my ceramic studio. And then they're just left out to dry. I think I made these guys a couple of weeks ago. They are fragile. Um, but if I were to put some acrylic sealer or paint on them, they'd be a little bit stronger. They're not, they can't hold water. So if I tried to make a little dish for my bird out of this cat cup, um, it would turn right back into clay. So there's some disadvantages to greenware, but you can make some really lovely looking objects that are ready to use right away. I usually use high fire clay, so it needs to go in a really hot oven um, to be fired. And here is a piece of bisqueware that my husband made using high fire stoneware clay. Um, and it feels kind of rough and dry and scratchy. It's hard, it's a lot harder than that greenware, um, but it hasn't been glazed yet. So with the high fire clay, you fire it once to get bisqueware, and then you fire it, you glaze it, and you fire it again. And the great thing about high fire glazes is you can get such a range of color. This little dish, this simple dish, was dipped in lots of different colors, and you get these swirly iridescent colors and speckles and things that really only happen at those high, high temperatures. And you can see that that pale pinky clay turns really dark when it gets um, its final firing. It's gray, it's hard, it's very, very strong. So I like high fire clay, and when you're calling around to ceramic studios, I'd imagine they'd suggest the high fire clay too. But you can still make beautiful things with low fire clay or with salt dough or some other kind of air dry clay. Today, I'm gonna to be working with my high fire clay so that I can use it later um, and fire it at the studio that I like. But feel free to use what you want. So before our next video, Make sure you have a piece of fabric to cover your work surface, a little bowl of water, a sponge, a toothpick, and your little lump of clay. I'll see you soon. I can't wait to make something together.